Thank you so much to everybody for joining us for today's webinar with McClatchy. Today we have Natalie and Rima from their news culture, or news talent and culture team here to talk with you all and a couple of our military veterans and journalism McClatchy fellows that are also here to talk with you and their editor. Um, they're going to walk you guys through the culture at McClatchy, the opportunities they have available for veterans, as well as just what they're looking for in applicants. So Rima and Natalie, if you'd like to go ahead. Hello, everybody. I apologize. Zoom is always fun. I'm Rayma Bland. I am the Deputy Director of News Talent Acquisition and Development for McClatchy. Um, I'm going to do a lot of talking. So before I get going, I'm going to hand it over to my boss, um, Natalie, to introduce herself as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Natalie Piner. I'm the Senior Director of Talent for News, uh, Talent, Culture, and Training. I've been with the company for about, returned for about 19 years now. I actually started as an intern uh, with the company. Uh, and I'm based in Miami, as uh, Rama will share with you all. Um, our goal and our team is focused around bringing in the great talent uh, and finding opportunities to do that, uh, as well as retaining that talent and developing that talent. Uh, and so we look forward to sharing more with you today. Thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing more from um, our current fellows as well uh, about their experience. So we look forward for a great day today with you all. Yeah, and not joining us today, but who is available and I'll have his contact information who does a big part of this as well is Rick Hirsch, who is our senior editor for um, News Talent Development. He's my fellow recruiter. Um, some of, I know our, our guests have spoken to us both throughout this process. Um, we're very involved. So unfortunately he couldn't make it. He's still stuck abroad right now. Um, so we're hoping that he'll make it back uh, safe and sound soon. Um, but we we're so excited that you were able to join us. Um, this is an opportunity. We really wanna have a chance to kind of answer your questions. So we're gonna leave a big chunk of this hopefully to hear from you all what questions you had, but it's really just kind of an informational session to tell you a little bit about our organization, McClatchy, and also some tips as you're navigating um, the, the hunt and journalism jobs. Sometimes it can be a bit of an enigmatic process, um, and we want to kind of help talk about maybe some trip tick, uh, tips and tricks and things that our editors and other hiring managers within the journalism business sort of look for. Um, when they're going through this process. So we also have, um, in addition to Alan Frazier and Joshua Carter, who are two MJ, MBJ fellows, um, along with a couple of other fellows that we have, um, Jeffrey Couch, who is the editor of the Belleville News Democrat, is joining us as well and is going to share a little bit about some of the things that's a hiring manager that he kind of looks for in and applicants um, do this process. So um, welcome to McClatchy. I'm going to share a little bit about our company. So sorry, it's a little bit of a promo, um, but not too much. Um, we have about 30, well, we have 30 local markets, including a DC bureau throughout the country. Many of them are speckled throughout the Southeast, the Carolinas, um, the Midwest, Illinois, where Josh and Jeff are uh, currently based, as well as Biloxi, um, the Pacific Northwest, Sacramento, um, a lot of the um, Northern and Central area of California. Um, and also probably most notably the Miami Herald down in Florida. Um, so you can see some of our, our markets right here. The Kansas City Star is probably one of our better known markets. Miami Herald, the Wichita Eagle, the Sacramento Bee. Um, among, our, among all of our um, news organizations, we have accumulated, we have Pulitzer Prizes. So we are very serious about our news. We're very serious about our hard hitting news, including just this year, the Miami Herald won um, uh, a Pulitzer yet again for its um, editorial writing um, coverage. So we, we stay winning. Um, we have about 70, a global audience of about 72 million um, at this point. Um, so just a little bit of trivia about us. Um, we're a world-class news organization. As I said, there's 30 markets and our roots date back to 1857. So we are a very old news organization. Um, back uh, in 1857, James McClatchy founded our newspaper in California in the wake of the California 
gold rush at the time. It was the, called the Daily Bee, but it later became known as the Sacramento Bee, which many of you are familiar with. So who is McClatchy? As I said, we're speckled all throughout the country. Our biggest papers are the Miami Herald, the Kansas City Star, the Charlotte Observer, the Raleigh News and Observer, the Fort Worth Star, Telegram are probably our five biggest markets. But as I said, we also have a location in DC. You can see we have a, um, a, a newspaper in Pennsylvania as well. We've got newspapers speckled throughout the Midwest, um, California and all the way up into um, Washington state. And so just to give you a little taste of some of our, um, some of the work that we do, um, one of the things uh, we include, uh, included the house of cards, because this is again, one of the things that, that earned us a Pulitzer back in uh, 2022. It was about the Surfside um, collapse in Miami. Some of you may be familiar with that. It was a very deep dive into that. Um, we do a lot of different kind of work around that. So reporting is super important. We like to storytell in a lot of different ways. Um, I don't know if Zoom is gonna allow me to do the link thing. I don't want it to be all awkward with me trying to click this and then it not showing up. But so I'll give you sort of an overview of it. Um, but this House of Cards was a multimedia all hands on deck project um, that was done by many members of the Miami Herald to really probe into what went wrong, what were some of the infrastructure things, what are, were some of the things that they knew um, and what were some of the things that were being said before uh, this tragedy happened. So it was um, it was all hands on deck. You have some of the um, journalists listed there, but there were a lot of different people um, involved in this, from the reporting to the um, to the videography to the graphics. Um, another one that I wanted to highlight that's a little bit more recent was from um, one of our other markets, uh, South in South Carolina, the state um, that did a piece on toxic deals for decades. Uh, South Carolina farmers have fertilized fields with sludge. It could be having toxic impacts. So it's looking at the kind of impact that that is having on the community. All of our, I say this to say, there is a big premium among a lot of our newspapers on digging deep. And I think Jeff Couch can talk to that. The Belleville News Democrat is known for digging um, deep as well. We're big into enterprise reporting and we want to see people who have that curiosity to go the extra mile. So this kind of speaks to, I think, some of what um, what our, our um, philosophy on uh, news coverage is all about. Um, this is from one of our employees, Harrison Mantis, who's the local government reporter at the Fort Worth Star Telegram. He said, it's my job to make sure local government knows somebody is watching. Um, we understand the importance of that. There are all kinds of studies about what happens to, to um, cities and towns when there is a very robust news um, organization operation there versus the ones that are known as news deserts and the ways that the community can kind of suffer from that. So it is that is a big part of what we're about is community coverage, making sure that people understand what is going on in their government, not just the national government, but what's happening in their own backyard. So opportunities, as you know, we have the fellowship. We have our we will be looking for um, additional fellows for this this year with the MVJ our partnership with NVJ, so look out for that. We also have internships this summer as well. Um, we have internships at all of our 30 markets. Um, these are for not just students, also recent graduates um, and people who are just looking to get an entryway into um, the news journalism business. They are all paid. Um, they are on location. Our fellowships are on location as well. I know there's a lot of questions sometimes about is this remote or not? Very rarely are our reporting positions remote, um, but our fellowships are typically on site and our internships are on site. Um, our full time positions, we have an array of different full time positions, um, and all can be found on our McClatchy career page. Can you all see that page there? Did it pop up? Okay, yay. So that did work. Um, so, um, and now I got to figure out how to go back to the screen again because I'm used to using Google Meet, not this. Um, but anyways, you can see if you go to our McClatchy page, um, which is just McClatchy 
slash mcclatchy.com slash careers. Um, I will put that in the chat as well. But when you click through that, you'll see all of the different current openings that you have. You'll see a lot of internships right now because we are in the process of um, reviewing and accepting um, applications for our internships, but you'll see all of the current uh, opportunities that we have um, for news and beyond. Oh, do you guys see that? Did I get back? Okay, yay. This is so much easier than Google Meet. <laughs> um, all right, so one of the frequently asked questions that we get is what, uh, what are um, McClatchy hiring managers seeking in candidates? Um, I get this question all the time in my job. So I just kind of wanted to give a summation and, and we can talk more about this in the next few minutes, but um, we recognize that every applicant brings something unique to the table that they can ultimately contribute to the quality of our coverage. Um, so obviously, as veterans, as, as, as members of the military, um, you guys are, your insight into certain areas, things that you've seen, things that you've experienced are things that you bring to the table that nobody else has. Um, there are some very basic life experiences that you're bringing to the table. Highlight those things. Um, so in your cover letter, be sure to highlight the unique experiences and perspectives that you have. We also want to see you demonstrate um, solid reporting and writing skills, good news judgment, enterprise. So you might say to yourself, well, I've never really done any reporting. How am I supposed to do this? I'm new to this and I want to get into journalism. Well, show your curiosity. There's things that we can cut that that make a potentially um, a, a budgeting journalist. So if you have curiosity, um, if you have a drive to go the extra mile, if you have some versatility, which obviously being in the military, you have to have a lot of versatility and adaptability. Highlight those kinds of things in your cover letter. Maybe you have not had the chance to go out and do a whole lot of breaking news coverage, but have you done? Have you had an opportunity to do some research on something? Have you had an opportunity um, in the field where you had to go do something a little extra, some life experience like that? So just show those kinds of things that show your ability to be curious. Um, definitely be professional. That's with everything that, um, with any any job, you want always want to show a degree of professionalism and research. And show, show that drive that you have to go the extra mile for your team, for whoever you're working for. Um, those are the things that are gonna stand out. Um, so a couple of tips, and then I'm gonna hand it over to um, our guests here in a minute. Um, but just a couple of tips, and these are sort of universal, whether it's for this fellowship or for any, I, I wanna say pretty much not just for McClatchy, even though we are promoting McClatchy, but not just for McClatchy, but for any news um, job that you're pursuing, if journalism is the place, the avenue you wanna go into, um, these certainly do apply. Um, so for one thing, show you are serious through your preparation. I say, I've said this before and it's gonna sound kind of trite, but serious journalists take journalism seriously. So, do your best not to come off like you're applying because the journalism job sounded really cool. Show that you went a little bit further than just, oh, this seems like a really cool thing. And I saw on TV this thing and journalism is super, super cool because it is a lot of work and it is a very serious profession. We joke a lot, but it is still a very serious profession. So show some research about the company. Look at some of the content of the places that you want to uh, apply for. Find out about what are the basic ethical tenets of that, um, of, of journalism. And pretty much for one place, they're all going to apply. So if you know the journalism ethics codes for the New York Times, they're going to apply to just about any other place um, that you apply, you, you apply for a job. So just kind of understand those basic journalism ethical tenets. Um, look up a little bit about the role. Make sure that you've looked, looked kind of closely at the job description. Um, reporting always involves a lot of research and fact checking. So from the start, if in your application and in your interview, you're showing that you did some research, um, that's already gonna be a good first step. That's already gonna good, be a good signal to the hiring manager. Um, also, don't put yourself in a box. Um, I remember starting in this business thinking what kind of journalism I wanted to do, and that shifted a whole lot over time. So. 
be open to exploring different facets of the industry to get your start. You might surprise yourself and find out that you actually love something that you may have not expected. Um, also, it's this is one that doesn't get talked about a lot. So I want to give you a little bit of insight here about understanding sort of experience level expectations. Always aspire to be whatever you want to be, but it's, it is good to come in with a sort of understanding of what the starting point is. So with very few exceptions, usually breaking news and general assignment roles are kind of the starter points in journalism. So those are the entry ways into all of the other roles that you want to do, whether it's sports, opinion writing, culture, life and, and arts, um, investigative reporting, all of those are considered advanced level. So a lot of times when you're seeing those openings, they're looking for folks who already have like a foundational level understanding of journalism that have gotten some um, general assignment, breaking news coverage, maybe done a beat or two, a beat or two before they get into um, sort of what would be considered the big dogs, like sports, you know, pro sports coverage um, and culture coverage, and even opinion writing, which I know everybody thinks, oh well. You know, everybody has a blog. Well, a lot of the top blog writers usually started off um, doing a bit more general assignment. So it is important to kind of understand that pathway. Um, be prepared to start, start small, small markets, small roles, small organization, wherever you start is not where you're gonna end up, guaranteed. Um, be prepared to move for your first and maybe second and maybe third journalism job. Unless you're looking at a job right in your market where you live right now, most of the time, um, you know, post pandemic, these aren't remote roles anymore. They are gonna involve some relocation. So be prepared um, to move to a new place and learn about a new place. Um, be careful not to exaggerate or embellish your knowledge or skills because hiring managers are journalists and they will probably test you on this. I am a witness, this is a true story. That happened to me and it was very awkward. I, I exaggerated something way when I was an early career journalist and I got called on it and it was super awkward. So don't do it. Um, come to an interview prepared with questions. So again, remember the role is journalism. Journalists ask a lot of questions. So you should always have one or two questions in your back pocket during that interview when that time comes to, you know, when they say, do you have any questions for me? If it's a journalism job, you should never come with no questions at all because then they're going to think, well, how are you gonna interview people if you don't come with questions? So always come prepared with some questions. Um, think critically and practically about the areas where you can grow. I'm gonna call out Alan and Josh for this because this left a big impression for me. They were really good at identifying like their potential growth areas as well. And I know that stood out to us um, a lot because what that demonstrates is you're thinking critically, you're really, you are showing some seriousness. You've thought about what you want to do, where you want to go, and how you want to get there. And you're also showing that you're open to receiving constructive feedback, which as an editor, that's a really important thing to know about a potential journalist is that you're going to be open to critiques. You're not, you're going to understand that there is always opportunity to grow. Um, so that is, that's a strong point too. And I will say just firsthand that left an impression um, with us, with, with the fellows that are now um, in our organization and include samples of your work that show some enterprise. So even if you don't have a whole lot of reporting um, articles, if you have other kinds of writing that just show a good amount of research that show that you dug a little deeper into a topic, those are important things. Anything that shows original kind of writing um, beyond just a press release is gonna leave more of an impression. So those are just a few little tidbits. I, ha I have given Devin the um, slides for this. So if you wanna go back and refer to them, he, she, she has them uh, for, for you to use. Um, and if you do have more questions, I'm always available. Natalie is available and Rick is certainly available um, to take on more questions or talk more deeply about this stuff. We always are happy to help. Um, so with that, I just wanted to give, um, Alan and Josh a chance to, um, again, this is not super formal, but share a little bit about um, what you what your experience has been like so far. Um, so I guess I can start with maybe um, Josh, if you want to talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the things that um, were 
you've learned so far and maybe um, you were surprised by so far in this job? Um, so some things I've learned is how to, you know, be resourceful, right? In like a, a small kind of town, um, especially coming from like a big city. It really takes a lot to like kind of work into a community and kind of understand the way that, um, you know, that, that, that people think. And a lot of the, you know, the people who have been working here all have been working here for the most part for a really long time. And they're really, really entrenched in the community. So it really has taught me to kind of like use my resources in a way that brings me closer to the community. Um, and it also kind of teaches me to just kind of like, this is going to sound kind of stupid, but kind of just like always be out there, you know, because it's like every single interaction you have in a market like this, like is going to mean something to somebody. Um, and it just, it really makes me kind of value the coverage that I do that much more, you know, to be like, man, even the small thing is, you know, this is this guy who knows this guy. And I'm sure he knows at least two of my editors because he's been here for a long time. And, um, and yeah. Yeah. And it also challenges me a lot to, uh, you know, because and again, in like a small market like this, um, with investigative stuff, a lot of time, because it's a lot smaller than like a big city, people with cameras aren't as common, you know, like, it's not as common to see someone walking around with like, a $3,000 camera and a huge lens. So it really, it really challenges me visually to kind of be like, okay, so how am I going to, how am I going to pull this off in a way that's both ethical and respectful and also um, you know, captivating. So, thank you so much, Alan. I definitely relate to most of that for sure. Uh, you know, my background was more so in history than journalism, even though I did, you know, minor in journalism and studied it a good bit. Uh, but something that really surprised me when I came into the newsroom was how open they were to receiving me, even though I don't have as much experience as probably some other interns or new employees. Uh, and those first two days were definitely a learning experience, but they were very helpful. Uh, my senior editor was super helpful. And I think within the first week of being in the newsroom, I had a pretty good grasp on what was expected and how to do everything. And it's honestly a ton of fun. Uh, so I think they could have very easily put me into a breaking news role and rolled with it. Uh, and I have done it a few times, but they definitely used my strength more so. And I cover, you know, local history and nostalgia with Biloxi and the surrounding areas now. And coming from a, you know, academic history focus where a lot of research, a lot of journal articles, very in-depth stuff for a paper, this was a whole different avenue that I had to learn. Uh, and it's really interesting to learn about the history of this local area and then write about it and then discovering how connected everyone in these six counties are. Uh, I've made phone calls two counties over to speak with someone from the historical society there. And, you know, when I tell them who I am, they they tell me, oh, we've been reading your work for the past couple of months. We love it. We love what you're doing. And it's amazing to talk to people who already know about you and your work before you've ever met them. Uh, so it's it's a ton of fun. I've learned a lot, and yeah, I'm getting amazing experience. It's 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 super helpful. That's awesome to hear. I wonder if um and and Jeff, feel free to 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 jump in here if you all have some advice or, um, and I see your question, Russell, we're gonna get to questions real soon. Um, if you have like just sort of initial advice that you might give folks who are looking to get into this industry or what your journey to get into this so far, what you found most helpful um, and feel free anybody to jump, jump in there. I can go ahead and say for me going into this, I definitely didn't know what to expect at all. And I think what really helped me personally was I knew what my strengths were and what my weaknesses were. So I knew, you know, I can definitely write. I can do research. I definitely know history. Interviewing and 
traditional journalism skills definitely need work. I knew that. And, you know, it's the reason I applied to this. Uh, so I think it's important to identify those things coming into this. And then when you start, you really need to be receptive of, you know, the critiques and the advice that others offer you, you know, for your strengths and your weaknesses. I think I was when I came into this. So my editor and even the other journalists in the newsroom helped me with that. And I, you know, since I've started, I've interviewed, you know, veterans own, you know, new businesses they've opened, you know, other local history stories. A couple of my stories have been shared by military.com and, you know, it's, ton of stuff. And I've also gone and covered local elections as well. And these are things I would not have been able to do before this. Uh, but listening to their advice and being open to, you know, suggestions helped me get to the point where now I feel comfortable going out and doing those things. Yes, I understand. Okay, just, yeah, let me just, I can add a little bit. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity, uh, Rima. And it's great to see everybody on here. Um, all the stuff Rima said, first of all, as far as recruiting, interviewing, being prepared um, to talk to a potential um, employer or fellow um, site, we're all right on the money. Um, and I, I don't have a ton to add there, ex except, you know, when I think of people I want I want to hire, the first thing I want to hear is I want people to be have a really positive attitude. I don't mean, I don't mean you know, saccharine, but positive attitude, um, very collaborative, a learning approach. Like, you know, I want to, I want to see that you really want to learn whether you're a, a, a rookie that's never done um, anything in journalism, but you have all these other skills, or if you're somebody that has the, um, already has the, um, some experience, I, I want to see that uh, kind of um, in here, you know, I want to learn. And then when you go into the job, live that you know, you're going to learn a whole lot um, in a very short time. Um, we had a, uh, we had a, a really great advantage with, um, with Carter, who go, he goes by Carter, um, instead of Josh. Uh, and, and once we learned that, everything went better. Uh, no, it, it, Carter, from the beginning, um, we were an advantage because he has some experience, and he leveraged that when we talked to him, I mean, he really, he, he really knew from, from researching us and also from doing the work already, um, kind of the hot points that we wanted to hear. So, so if you have that experience, definitely leverage it and, and use it. And even if it's, even if it's a, 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 a small internship, if you don't have that experience, and I'm sorry, I'm blabbing right now, but if you don't have any of that experience, just like Rima said, use, use the skills that you do have. I'm a collaborative person. Here's an example of what I did to collaborate. I've been on teams. I've worked on teams and here's what we did. Here's something unusual that I did that was kind of, um, excuse the phrase, but outside the box. Because um, we're always looking for um, people who think big um, and have big ideas. At the Belleville News Democrat, we're a smaller newsroom, but we think big, we act big. And if you have a really good idea, you're going to get to do it. Um, so you come in with that kind of an attitude. So that's, I mean, that's some just off the cuff advice. And I'd be glad to answer any questions for any candidates out there. I think every situation has some things in common, but also they're different. The other thing about that we were really lucky here, blessed, and, and I appreciate, is we had a we had a, a photojournalist opening that had just occurred uh, two months earlier, and and. Uh, Carter is a is a really outstanding photojournalist, and it kind of you know it matched up, and it's proven um, wonderful uh, the work that he's doing, and and you know he's learning a lot, and he's contributing a lot, and I'd love to have him here forever if I could. So, that's all I got right now. Love it. Thank you so much for that. Um, now is my favorite part of of hearing from um, our are aspiring, I would assume, journalists in the audience. Um, Russell, I saw you had your hand up, um, so I hope that was a mistake. So what you got? Yeah, I wanted to ask about the process of, um, you know, can anybody sort of talk about the process of coming into a, a local news setting, into a new newsroom, um, and then, you know, having to build contacts and, and, and what that's been like? 
um, you know, maybe you're in a town that that you're that you're unfamiliar with and you don't have any friends there yet. Right. And so what's it been like, like having to um, reach out to people and and uh, get in touch with them? And, and and that's about it. Well, excellent question. You guys want to take a stab at it? Yeah, I'll do. Very good. Yeah. Um, so I will say I did have a bit of an advantage because I lived I grew up in Missouri, which is not too far from here. I um, never really came over on this side of the bridge. So it was like a new community, but at least I did have like some like family support. Um, but I, I'd say like the number one thing is to just, you know, I feel like it's it, like a, a quality of a good journalist anyways, is to just like be inherently inquisitive all the time. And that just, that's not just like to the bounds of, you know, oh, what's, why is the government cleaning this up and not telling anyone or having meetings and not inviting the public? It can also just be like, man, that dude looks cool. I'm going to go talk to him, you know, at a bar or like, hey, this woman's walking around with a cell phone pointing pictures, you know, well, what's, what's she up to? And then it turns out she's like an 80 year old woman playing Pokemon Go, you know, like you just have to like be interested in people and be interested in like kind of the world at large and just just experience it, you know, just experience as much as you can, um, you know, as much as I want to go home and play video games and hang out with my cat you know sometimes sometimes part of the job is just being like okay I'm gonna go to a, a bar tonight or I'm gonna go walk around the park and talk to some people or take pictures of birds and see who I come across you know so I can definitely add on to that too so for me uh, I've noticed that you know my stories are different I didn't get put into like a breaking news role uh, since I covered history and local nostalgia and culture. Uh, so for me, I had to, cause I'm not from Biloxi or the Mississippi coast. I'm from the Mississippi Delta. So I didn't really know anything about this area. Uh, so I really familiarized myself with the history of the area, the different cities. I reached out to the historical societies. I think within the first week uh, of starting, I reached out to all six of them or maybe a couple more as well. Uh, and I asked for, you know, good sources, good links to go to. And I spent a good bit of time learning about it. Uh, and that also helped me build a relationship with those groups. So whenever I get an idea like, oh, I wonder what the history of this old building is, or, you know, this place or this area is on the National Registry of Historic Places, I already have someone I can call and ask about and nine out of 10 times, they have a lot of info they can give me on it. So I really haven't had a problem with that. And then whenever, you know, I am tasked with something like go cover this uh, election in a county I've never even been to before, which has happened once or twice. Uh, one of the other reporters who has been here for, you know, 20, 30 years already has the contacts and is more than happy to give me those. So I've never had a problem finding someone or you know, having someone to go talk to in the first place. It, it's pretty natural, but there have been a couple of times where I went into a cigar shop and I found out the owner of the cigar shop purchased it two years ago, right after he retired from the Navy, and that he was a journalist for the Navy for 20 years. So I went and did a story on him. So sometimes, yeah, it just falls right into your lap. That's great. Thank you. Really great points. And just to put a fine tune on a uh, fine point on that, just because I think sometimes this gets overlooked, journalists like to help other journalists. Um, when I went to a new town, I got a lot of help, not only from journalists within my own newsroom, but also other journalists within the community. Like, yeah, I know people think we're rivals and stuff, but I got a lot of tips and a lot of information just from learning from other journalists who were on the same beat as me who are doing the same thing. We like to help each other. We're all kind of in it together. So um, that's the only thing I would also add is don't, don't, don't discount the other journalists in your community as well. The ones in your newsroom are super helpful, have lots of institutional knowledge and the folks even outside um, of your newsroom oftentimes like to help too. Uh, to Chandra, did I say that right? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Um, real quick, I'd like to know more about the culture of diversity. I know this is a common question that is being asked as a Black woman. 
I want to make sure that I will feel secure and be supported in any work center I enter into. So I would like to know what initiatives does your organization take to ensure that there's a diverse group of people reporting diverse stories from a, a perspective of actually bringing the information to the masses and not skewing the information in a particular direction, so to speak. Sure. So there's a couple of different levels. There's the newsroom level, there's the organizational level. And so I um, actually, Natalie, I, this is kind of your area as well. Do you want to talk about the organizational level and then we can go down from yeah, there? Yes, so I was going to say, I can do the organizational level, but definitely, um, you know, one of the things that we have just as a starting point is our employee resource center. I mean, <laughs> employee resource groups. Uh, and those groups um, allow... Um, those with common or those that um, are within the group. So we have a people of color group, for example, or allies of that group to participate and just further acknowledge um, any um, situation that may be going on. So anything that's even outside of the company, as well as ways to actually support and celebrate uh, people of color, whether um, we're doing that when we have our Black History Month or Hispanic Heritage Month, having speakers come in um, and, and just talking about some of the issues and concerns that might be happening within or outside of the company. Um, we also, for myself, just to give, you know, this is fresh, um, we, our company has invested in development. Uh, and so I just came back from the Stanford Black Leaders Program, which the company sponsored me to attend. Uh, and that just, for me, just continues to show um, the importance of making sure we're recognizing that some Black leaders and employees are having different experiences within the company, and yet their support uh, is there as well. I actually um, launched a HBCU internship program uh, where we uh, bring interns in uh, from different HBCUs, uh, it was an idea that I had that the CEO got behind and supported. I asked for three interns. He he doubled it. He basically wanted me to finish the presentation just to say, I, a great idea, let's bring in six. Uh, and basically those interns stay um, for, they start off their after their freshman year and they continue until they graduate. Uh, so the investment, the commitment is there. I think those are great. Okay, I see you. We're going to talk. I just saw she just posted that she's graduated from Texas Southern University. I went to Tuskegee, headed up for homecoming uh, this week. <laughs> uh, and so we, you know, the support is there. Uh, and uh, just for you, just to look at our leadership as well, um, uh, Jeff Dorsey uh, is a person of color. He is our uh, chief um Oh my goodness, operations officer. Um, and then we also have Monica, who is our boss, uh, Monica Richardson, who leads the VP. She's the VP of uh, local news for our larger markets. Uh, and Cynthia, De Cynthia DeBose is a senior VP uh, in our transformation division. Uh, so I hope that kind of gives you an idea of that commitment um, constantly and recognizing not just the obvious, the race and gender diversity, but also this opportunity. We've been wanting to um, see how we can um, uh, tap in and connect with military um, because we know that that is a resource for us and an, a voice that we don't often have. And so for us to have this opportunity, uh, it just continues to show our commitment to diversity. I hope that answers the question. Absolutely, thank you. Great. You're well, thank you so much. And, and I will add to that at the um, at the newsroom level. Uh, and I will say the ERGs, um, there is a people of color ERG, there's an LGBTQ ERG, there's a working parents ERG, there are, there's a women's ERG, there's a whole bunch of different ERGs. I'm a part of two of them. And they are very, it's a safe space. You can really kind of talk about what you need to talk about in those spaces that affect your lives. And I I, I find a lot of support personally um, being part of those ERGs as well. So they do make a big difference. But at the, at the newsroom level, newsrooms have also developed um, some of their own, like I know where I am here in uh, North Carolina, the News and Observer has um, its own 
in-house equity group as well. So there are there are support systems at the newsroom level as well, which is why I say it's at different levels. We generally try to be receptive to the populations that we have. So not just people of color, not just LGBTQ, but if we have like a large military um, population somewhere, we're gonna try to think about how we can we support that too. So we kind of rely on the feedback um, from our, our staff and our members to kind of figure out what needs we want we want to meet. Um, Kareem, I see your hand. Oh, thank you. I have two questions. Uh, okay, the first question I was I was just looking at the HBCU um, fellowship, and I was wondering what's the difference in role between this fellowship we have and that fellowship we have at McClatchy. And the second question is uh, how much influence does a, a, a fellowship a person have in their choosing the location that their fellowship is going to be at? Or if they're offered a position, what 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 location is that position going to be at? Natalie, do you want me to take the first part of the question and you can speak to the, the first? The first one. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so the the big difference, just to just to kind of, it's timing. So um, the uh, MVJ partnership that we have is a six month fellowship, whereas. There are two HBCU initiatives. One is a summer internship for 10 weeks, essentially about three, three months um, throughout the summer. Um, and the HBCU initiative that Natalie is a part of is a longer, is a much longer pro um, program which she can kind of talk about. Um, but the MVJ is a partnership with military veterans in journalism. There is kind of a application process that starts with the military veterans uh, in journalism. And uh, De Devon, uh, Devon, before it comes over to us, then we do a little bit of vetting. And then there uh, is a six month fellowship that is attached to that. So the timing is, is, is a big distinction uh, there as well. Natalie, did you want to talk about the HBCU a little bit more? Right. So the HBCU too, we are looking for students who are actually in classes there uh, in HBCU currently. Uh, and that, you know, if, if that is the case, then by all means, we're typically looking for freshmen, um, although I've also had sophomores as well. And that reason for that, as I learned through my internship, is that I had no idea that I can have a career in this industry. And because I start off early, I was able to figure out what areas I was interested in. I, I, was, I was mostly in HR and my major for school was business administration. Um, but it was the internship that helped me fall in love with HR work. Uh, and so I know that if we start off early, instead of expecting them to have that experience when they're seniors and graduating, I think that helps th them ready for the industry that and the opportunities that we have within our industry. Um, I think your other question too, Kareem, was um, uh, about picking your location. Did you speak to that? I'm sorry, Rayma, because- uh, No, I'm sorry, no, I didn't okay. it. Um, but to answer that question, so with both the internship and the fellowship, applicants do get the chance to indicate where they would like, what their preference would be. Um, and that gets talked about more as we move through the interview process. But it is also important to know kind of that it's also kind of focused on where the need is. So I, I know oftentimes, particularly with our internship programs, we get lots and lots of applicants who their first choice is, is Miami Herald because everybody wants to work at the Miami Herald. Um, so you're gonna have a bigger pool there, which means it's gonna be more competitive. Um, so there, there's a preference you can put, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that that is where you're going to be placed. But we do take that into um, account as we're um, looking at places as Jeff knows, as Carter and Alan both know, we talk to them um, you know, about where some of their preferences where they would like to go and we found a match based on that so it's a match between the preference and also the need of the organization of the newsroom does that answer your question yes it does thank you now i want to make sure i've seen everybody for questions are there other questions all really good questions so far I just want to know, Carter, did you really see the 80-year-old woman going after um, Pokemon Go on the side? Yeah, 
I did exaggerate the late the age. She was 70. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. It was actually on like my first day. I walked outside and I was like, you know, like I've finished all my McClatchy training. Like I've gone and like shot an assignment. I was like, I'll just need to get out and see what I can find. So I, I like as soon as I walked out the building, like there's this like lady walking around. I'm like, hey, <laughs> what are you doing? She's like, hey, do you work for the news? I was like, yeah, I, I do actually, because I have like my pass on. And she's like, you should do a story about all of us doing Pokemon Go. And she like told me about how she like connected with her like son and all this. But she's oh, been good to me since that day, but I'm going to make a story out of it. Yeah, that is awesome. That yeah, to like come from that perspective, story. actually. That is, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Kareem, I see your hand again. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, is there a date for the next round of VJ fellowships? And is it reoccurring like around the same time every year? right oh this this is our first year at Kareem, uh and so we're we're looking out if you're interested in an opportunity definitely reach out to myself or rama rama really is leading this um uh effort here um but either one of us or even rick he he's not on this call uh but definitely uh, been a part of this process um if you're interested this it's now um is the opportunity um for us to to try and I'll figure out an opportunity for you. Uh, Russell. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, just with MVJ, we have, um, you know, I mean, we have nearly a thousand members. And so uh, everybody's at kind of a, a different level, right? And and I, I just wonder um, when, when, we're, when we're applying for this fellowship, what are the kinds of uh, like how advanced of a professional is like, is there too advanced of a professional where it's like, Oh, you're not going to want to apply for this. Is there somebody who's ha is too new too green, right? Like where, where are the kind of the, the, the vertical limits on that? I would say broadly, this is probably not going to be a satisfactory answer, but there really are no limits. It's kind of more attitude. Um, are you, if you're super new, are you willing to learn? Are you willing to understand where you're at? Um, are you willing to kind of do the research to understand what this job is all about? Um, and if, if you're willing to do those, if you're willing to come with a bit of research and understanding about the job, the role, even if you don't have, you don't check the boxes of the experience, if you come with that understanding, that's gonna that's going to make you appealing. Um, vice versa, if you are considered very advanced, and we have we have some fellows who have done reporting um, before, again, come on with the attitude of, the, in journalism, there's always more to learn. And where we will take into account the experience as we've gone through this with some of the fellows that we saw that were more advanced, we kind of thought, oh, we know this place that's looking for a person who has these skills. Let's see if we can place them there. So again, we're working with the editors in our different markets because we have 30 of them trying to find a match that ma matches the fellow um, that we're looking at, the applicant that we're working at. So it's really not a blanket sort of deal where everybody I guess I, uh, I, guess, I guess, Kareem, to answer your question, that's another difference between the fellowship versus the internship. It's a little bit more customized. Um, we try to find, you know, places that make sense, places that might have opportunity for advancement if the, um, if the reporter is doing really well. Um, so we're trying to do all of those things um, through, through this fellowship um, as well. So it's not a one size fits all. You can come at a different level, but just be aware, as we said before, of what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, are and are you willing to learn at whatever your level you're at? Thank you, Rima, that, that answers my question. I do have kind of a follow-up with it. Like, um, first of all, I loved what you said about the the jobs being in person, right? I feel like um, actually at our, at our convention this weekend, um, Safan Kim talked about the importance of like being out there in the community that you're covering and being, you know, at the place where the thing is happening, right, as an as important part of journalism. Um, but I also want to know, like, what is the the structure, the kind of like, like, okay, how, how do how do I prove that I did a good job, right? Is it how many hours I worked? Is it how many stories I wrote or um, and 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 what is the structure of like how, how many hours are the work the the fellows working in a week and and what's the kind of flexibility there? I know that's like a lot of questions rolled up into one, but I I, I know I see that the the session's almost over, so I want to make sure I get them all in. 
Got a lot of questions. That's a good sign. Can I throw it to you, Jeff, since you're actually in a newsroom and you see what the reporters are doing there? Yeah, first of all, and, and I can speak for Belleville and then generally for the rest of the McClatchy newsrooms, we do have a set of goals um, and, and a mission that we're after. Um, but I, I I can't imagine that a fellow would come in and have those right away in front of them. I think we would be really open to, okay, let's see where you are. Um, we're really flexible on your assignments. We give you feedback on individual stories. And then if you stay, you know, for for a year or for your career or for the next step in your career, then you would get a set of of specific goals like, okay, you're on the city beat. So I don't know, we talk about it together and come up with here are the targets that we want, here are the kind of topics we want to cover. And then there's actually audience goals, right? We have goals of um, we want to try to make sure we reach a local audience and build our local subscribers. Those are the people we're serving. Um, so there are there are um, analytics attached to that. But uh, and speaking for Belleville specifically, and I think in general for other places, you wouldn't have to uh, deal with that right away. So that's a shortened version. Um, each job has a different um, set of expectations, just depends on the beat. And to answer your question about hours, these are considered, it is a six month fellowship, but it's considered a full-time job. So it's standard, yep. you know, 40 hour a week. I think some places is 37.5, depending on whether it's a, you know, under a guild or not, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's 40, uh, it's generally just expect a 40 hour um, week. Uh, we in journal, we in journalism, I'm not a journalist anymore, but I was for several years, understand that there, you kind of don't really stop being a journalist. <laughs> like I would go home during the weekend and see something and I'd be like, oh, that's a good story idea and stuff. So you kind of, you're always kind of, you know, always thinking um, and maybe always talking to different people to find out what the next story is, but it is a 40 hour week. Thank you. All really good questions. And man, we're down to the last minute. Devin, you weren't lying. You said give a give give us like 25, 30 minutes for questions, and you were totally right. Absolutely. <laughs> that we're gonna need it. Questions. So we do have time for just one more if anybody has one. I do have a question, but I don't know if it can be handled in a minute just for our group. I just was curious what made them interest, the people who are here, why are they interested in journalism? But I know we are almost, we're pretty much out of time. Rapid fire, if you want to tell me. <laughs> if you guys would like because, to drop it in the chat, go for it. Oh, Tashandra, were you going to say something? Because I understand the importance of telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth as it pertains to news and managing the images of a certain dynamics of people. Thank you for that. All right, well, I don't think there's anything further to say. That was a good summation. Um, so thank you guys so much for coming. And um, again, we appreciate you taking time to learn more about us. And again, our contact information is here. So if you have more follow-up questions after, feel free to reach out. Thank you, Devon, uh, Devin, for letting us have the floor. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us today and for talking with our members a little bit more about McClatchy, about the environment, about what they can expect. Um, we really, really appreciate your time. And for all of you who are attending, I will follow up with this slideshow in a PDF so it's easy to access. Um, and I will also tell you to keep an eye out for more information on the fellowships. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a good one. Thank you.